greetings and hello, Finance 2205 Personal Finance Students. Welcome to our class. This is the 2013 fall semester, and I know that this registration period has been a little crazy, but you're in now. We've had a couple new additions this week, and so I wanted to take a moment to just introduce myself to you all and uh, show you around the course just a little bit and perhaps talk about the syllabus. So, my name is Dr. Joan McGrory. You can call me Dr. Joan throughout this semester. And um, this is our personal finance class. I've taught this now for a couple semesters, and it is just a fantastic course. Um, I, you know, I think it's something everybody at the college should take. I think everybody in the country should take this class because there are so many things, as you read uh, throughout your book, there may be things that um, are new to you that you say, wow, you know, I didn't know that uh, I should do this as part of my retirement plan or that this is uh, really what insurance does. Uh, or it might just be something that you haven't thought about in a while and um, maybe it provides as you read about this particular topic uh, greater depth to something that you kind of know but you didn't know you know the particular details to it so I think you're going to enjoy this class and and um, you know I think we're going to have a great semester together uh, as you go through the semester we'll look at the syllabus and the assignments but you're going to be doing a quiz on each chapter those quizzes are just a way of you know dragging you through the chapter making sure that you're looking uh, at the material and then you're going to be doing a discussion board posting in those discussion board postings what I'm looking uh, at you to do is to demonstrate keyword there demonstrate to me that you have you know assimilated and processed uh, what you've read and as you answer the question each discussion board posting there'll be a, a question presented to you that um, that you are thinking about the things that you've read about I'll probably say this again as we go through the syllabus but let me give you a tip for success right out the gate here as we talk. Some of the discussion board postings will ask you to make a decision, a hard decision, between doing this or doing that. You know, if you only have a hundred dollars and item A cost a hundred dollars and item B cost a hundred dollars and the question to you is to choose, then you can't have both, can you? You have to make that decision. And what I'm interested in is why, what, what made you choose in the discussion either A or B. A tip for success is that a lot of students try to hedge their bet. They try to kind of say both, right? I would do both. The best answer is both. Well, the best answer is that we all could have everything all the time, right? But we can't. So in those discussion board postings, by watching this video, you get a little tip for success, which is make a firm decision and then support your decision. Now, let me talk about supporting your decision in the discussion board postings. It's easy to say, because I feel this way, because this is my opinion. But we're in an academic setting here. Even as you are uh, into careers, and I know many of you are, um, you know and I know that we can't go to our bosses and just say, well, this is, you know, I feel how I feel about it. My gut tells me that this is what I should do. What we all know is that we have to provide support for us. And support, in an, especially in an academic setting, but even in business careers, comes from the literature. Well, what is the literature? It's your textbook. So tell me what the author said to you. What did you read? What page was it on? Okay, so I'll be looking for those kind of things so that you make your opinion, make your choice. This is what I think we should do. And then you answer the question, why do you think that way? And who supports you in your decision to think that way? That's real college level discussion. We don't just want to say yes and no, and I think that's how it is because I feel that way, right? Also, sometimes students have personal um, stories from their lives that they share. Be careful because, um, you know, you are sharing this with the entire class, and so you don't need to divulge names or uh, highly personal uh, information, but, uh, you know, you can say, I remember a time when, or, you know, just be a good judge 
of the information that, that you share. But oftentimes, uh, even in the news, there are things that we can point to to say um, that it, you know, something we've read about applies to something that we've seen in the news. Okay? Okay, so with that, let's get started. You know who I am now. You already have a couple tips for success. So I'm going to start by exploring our course, and I'm going to go to the content area. Is this where I want to start? Well, I will start here because you've got some information here about how this course works, some of the assessment tools, how to communicate with me, uh, and even the online syllabus. Okay, So we're going to go through and look at the syllabus. But while we're on this page, just quickly look down here and see that there's a quiz for each chapter and there's a discussion for each chapter. Um, I see that there are links to something that uh, I deemed homework. I will take those out. I forgot to do that. So I'm glad I'm looking at this with you. Okay. So just there's going to be a quiz and a discussion for, um, for each chapter. And so you'll go through, through those. Okay. Now, as we're talking about quizzes, you'll be able to quick click the link and go directly to the quiz. But there's one very important quiz that I want you to see right away. As you look across the top, you'll see this link quizzes. I want you to go there because first of all there's a pause orientation quiz and you may have and hopefully have already completed the online pause orientation and that just helps you get familiar with the environment. It's something that was created by the college and it kind of reminds you that uh, online courses take extra time and perhaps extra scheduling. Okay, now the college requires that we report your attendance. So in an online class, how can we do that? You know, what's the best way to do that? Because you're all kind of coming in, going at different times. We're not sitting in a classroom together. So if I call out your name, how can you raise your hand and say, I'm here, I'm here? Well, the way I do that in my particular class is I have you take this attendance quiz. Very easy. As we look at the syllabus, you're going to see that you're going to get some points for that. And also, it's a great way for you to interact with the quizzing tool. Um, you can look at this on the video, but it's fairly self-explanatory. You click the Start Quiz button. There's going to be an OK link. And I want you to do this because I want you to see how easy it is for you to earn some points here, but most importantly, to report that you are attending. Okay? The thing, the question simply says, are you here? You're going to say, yes, I'm attending. Make sure you save that response. And then submit the quiz. That's all there is to it. Why would you pass up those easy points? And more importantly, why would you jeopardize your attendance in the quiz? All I'm doing is I'm clicking here, and you can see it on the screen, is saying, yes, I want to submit. Yes, I want to submit. Okay. And there it is, and look at that, yay, 100%. And what I do is I give you a bonus point for that, okay? So make sure you do that. Now, I'm going to go back to content, because let's look at the syllabus together, shall we? Click the link here to course syllabus. As this is loading, and please do be patient because these things sometimes take a while to display within your screen, um, I want to point out to you that if ever you see when this little sparkly icon over here, an envelope with a little sparkle on the corner, that means that you have email in pause. The first thing I'm going to tell you in my syllabus is that the, the way that I prefer to communicate with you and that I require for you to communicate with me is via pause email. This is for course-related um, information. Now, some of you uh, are my advisees uh, as we go from semester to semester. In that case, uh, those types of things are not communicated via pause. Pause email is for class questions and anything that's related to you as a student in my class. Okay, so as a student in my class, please use pause email. It just helps me to organize better, so I do appreciate that. And I give you some instructions there. If you're not familiar with it, I um, also have a video link that I can send you, but it's really an easy tool to use, and I'll show you that as we go on. Okay, so um, let's go down and look at the course description and the course objectives. Now, these five things are the key or the definitive things that anybody who takes this class will know when they leave this class. 
You're going to be able to identify personal planning documents. You're going to be able to identify differences in job costs and career costs. Okay, just some pretty standard stuff. So if we offer multiple sections of this, then at the end of the semester, how do we know that all the students learned the same thing? We have a test, right? It's going to be an easy test. We call it the SLO test. In other words, Student Learning Objectives, SLO. It's a 15 question multiple choice quiz. You're going to do well on it because later on in the course I'm going to tell you how to prepare for it. And so you'll do that at that time and you'll take the test and, and you'll do well. Again, I think and I hope an easy way for you to earn some points in our class. Okay. So let me continue on here. Uh, we've got the required textbook. I love this textbook, y'all. I think it's a great textbook, and I think you'll like it too. Uh, it's very uh, clear spoken, uh, practical examples, uh, relevant information, and so I think you're really going to enjoy it. Everything we do in this class will be in pause. I've mentioned the discussions, and you'll see the link to those up here and the quizzes, and you'll see that. Um, also, while I'm pointing things out on this toolbar, you see this grades link. This is the toolbar up here. And the very last link in the series there says grades. As I post your grades, you actually have an online grade book. So you'll see those grades constantly. Okay, You can go out there anytime. I email you and I say your grades for discussion board posting for chapter one have been posted. Now what I do expect is that you look at those grades. If you have an um, uh, issue with a grade that I have uh, posted, don't wait until the end of the semester to talk to me about chapter one. Okay, It's going to be gone and, and water under the bridge at that point. Um, so you know, within 48 hours, email me, let me know. I do ask, by the way, that you check your pause email daily. As an online student, you actually should probably be checking in more than that. But I will email you uh, announcements such as this, and uh, I want you to check that pause email daily. Okay, so you can go through and read here. You may find that a word processor is beneficial. Why is that? Because as you post into the discussion board, for example, you are college students and spelling and grammar are important. So we all make spelling mistakes. We all make grammar mistakes. But the important thing is that you identify them and then correct them. So if you type it first in a word processor and then copy and paste, don't upload any Word documents or anything like that to a discussion board. Please don't do that. Um, just copy and paste it once you know everything uh, is you know looking good. Okay. Now I'm not asking you to use the Queen's English. Okay. You don't have to the and now and all this kind of stuff. Okay. But I also don't want to see slang. I do not want to see lowercase i's and uh, contractions where there's no apostrophe. In other words, you're not text messaging me. Okay. Um, I will deduct points for that. So another tip for success, take a moment, reread it, fix any, you know, little capitalization problems, okay? So you can read the software and high, uh, hardware requirements. I'm going down to what is important to you, which is how am I evaluated in the course? What is the methods of evaluation? Well, I've mentioned the quizzes, but let me tell you a little bit more about the quizzes. For each quiz, you have unlimited attempts. You can take the quiz as many times as you like, but the questions will not be the same every time. I have a pool of questions, and so each time you may see the same question again. Uh, you may not. You may see that question as number one the first time you take the quiz, and then see that question as number seven the second time you take the quiz. Additionally, it will not help you to memorize that the answer to the question is A because the choices, they're multiple choice questions, the choices are also randomized. So if the answer is A this time, it may very well be C the next time. Okay? So how does that help you learn? Because as you look at the questions over and over and over again, you will start to remember the terms and what they're associated with. And that's one thing that the multiple choice is very good for, is helping you make those connections. Now, let me give you this caution. There is also critical thinking involved in these multiple choice questions because um, you're being asked to really to make connections in the, in the multiple choice. So I may present a scenario to you and then say pick the answer. 
And then you take the quiz again, and you assume that as you're reading the question, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this one. I've memorized that the answer to this is that. But what you don't realize is that there was one little thing in that scenario that was changed ever so slightly. So read very carefully. Read very carefully. Uh, read the answer choices very carefully. Read the question choices very carefully. Okay? All right. Now, unlimited attempts. You can take it as many times as you want. So what grade shall we use? The highest one. I don't care if you made a 5 out of 10, a 7 out of 10, a 10 out of 10, and then a 2 out of 10. Only the high score. What was the high one there? 10 out of 10? That's all I care about. What I want you to do is I want you to study by repeating those quizzes over and over and over. What I don't want to happen is I don't want you to say, I've got a high score, so I don't want to risk it. I don't want to go back in. There is no risk. I have removed the risk from you. All you have to do is keep taking that quiz until you get the highest possible score. Okay. Is What's the catch? That's what you're saying. What is the catch? There is a catch. There is a catch. I think since I've given you unlimited attempts and you can make, you know, the high only the highest grade counts. By the way, amongst all your quizzes there, I also give you a drop grade. Wow. I mean, you have the recipe for success. So I don't want you to be able to quit on yourself. Quitting is not an option. Okay. And here's how I do that. You have got to make on these quizzes an 80% or above for it to count at all. Okay. If you make a 75, you have in fact made a zero. Zero. Okay. If you make an 80, then you made an 80. If you make a hundred, then you make a hundred. Okay. But the minimum for it to count you have got to get into the 80% category, which we all know to be a B typically, right? As college students and with this particular subject matter, you can master it. I know that you can do it. You just have to plan to do it. So, you, you know, if you wait until the night before, this is going to be stressful. You know when crisis occurs. This is a great fi uh, personal finance um, uh, key to life, key to success. Uh, tragedy crisis occurs when there is not enough time, and that's the resource we're really concerned with here, time, to fix it. If the quiz is due Sunday night and you start working on it Sunday night, then it's a crisis. You might find that the computers uh, are unavailable, that the network is down, that you just don't have enough time to read and complete the quizzes. That's a crisis. If you had encountered that same situation three days earlier, you would have been able to make alternate plans. And consequently, you would have been successful. Okay, So don't put yourself in the box. How do you avoid it? You get a calendar. There's many free ones on the internet. You can go to student services and get the student handbook, which and that's free. That's free to you. That includes a calendar. Just because I tell you that the due date is on a certain day doesn't mean that you wait until then. In fact, as you have many classes, you may have to say, oh goodness, I can't wait until then because I've got a paper due and a test that week and some other things. So you may have to back up and finish that quiz early. Get that high score really early. And then as you have time, maybe you open the quiz back up and study and click, click, click and just see how you do. Okay, so keep studying, keep immersing yourself into the material. but. If you stop, if you quit on yourself at a 79, then you've gotten a zero. So don't quit. Don't do all that work just to get no points. Keep going. Repeat that quiz until you get a really good score. And I want you to plan to get an A. I want you to schedule your time so that you have time to get an A. You can do it. You can do it. You've got a drop grade. I only count the highest score. You just have to get it on up there that one time, okay? Okay, now we go into the discussion board, and I've mentioned that. And you can read in the syllabus here the, the points for the quiz. Ten points for the pause discussion quiz, ten points for each chapter quiz, right? And so you know you can get really good uh, grades there. Now, I'm going to go down here to the pause discussion. Uh, this is, in essence, your writing assignment uh, that you know helps you to demonstrate to me that you've understood the concept 
SEPs. So for each unit, you're going to be asked to submit a, a posting to answer questions to the discussion board. Again, proper spelling, grammar, capitalization, these are important. If you don't use proper spelling, grammar, and capitalization, I will deduct points. So don't do that. Just use a word processor. Check your work. Easy peasy, right? Okay, um, as you prepare your posting, make it meaningful. I don't want to see me too, yeah, what he said. I don't want to see that kind of stuff. You need to develop your opinion and make your statements and offer your support. Um, folks, I'll give you one other key to success, and you already know this, but I just want to uh, emphasize this to you. Please don't plagiarize. What is plagiarizing? Plagiarizing is when you Google it, or you Bing it, or you Yahoo it, and you find somebody else who's talked about that, and you copy and paste it. Okay, it's uh, it's really obvious to me. Uh, I read those sites too. I read them because it's teaching this course. I Google and I Bing and I Yahoo and all that kind of stuff. So I'm looking at these same pages. So read your textbook. It's great if you research other web pages. That's great, but that posting is your own writing and your own thoughts, and it's really obvious when it's not. Okay, so you know this is not uh, you're not writing a 10 page paper here I just want you to demonstrate to me that you get it that you understand what's going on okay so the the discussion is a great time to do that okay um, make a clear decision I told you that is a key to success support your opinion by referencing your textbook Tell me what page you are reading. Tell me what area of the book you are looking at, uh, because sometimes there may be, you know, there's one part of the book that says this is really good and here's why, and there's another part of the book that says this is really good and here's why, you know, within the same chapter. And uh, I want to know which which what part appealed to you. That's why I want you to direct me to what you were looking at when you made that opinion. Okay. So again, you'll see the points, 10 points for each uh, discussion posting. Uh, I mentioned the SLO quiz, Student Learning Objectives, those five earlier. Uh, I will tell you more about that later. That's going to be some points there, so 45 points. Don't want to miss that. Okay, now, then on we go to the exams. You have three exams listed here. Each one of those exams is 100 points. Okay. However, you see that in bold I have over here that there are 200 points uh, possible for your exams even though 300 points are listed. Well, why is that? Because you have a drop grade. You're all saying that already. I can hear you. Right? Um, you, you do have a drop grade. So you have a quiz drop grade and you have an exam drop grade. You do not have a discussion. Let me double check. Did I lie to you? You do not have a discussion drop grade. No. Do you? Oh, yes, you do. Oh, my goodness. I am so generous. I can't stand myself. My goodness. You have a, your lowest discussion posting score will be dropped also. Look at all these drop grades everywhere. You have every opportunity for success in this class. I know that you can do it, right? It's going to take a little planning, going to take a little time, a little reading, a little work on the computer, but you can do it, okay? Now, looking at these exams, you do have a drop grade. And I want you to look carefully at these exams. If I can make this a little larger, I'll try to do that, but it'll probably mess up this display. Okay, it says that the very first exam is 100 points, and it covers six chapters. One, two, three, four, five, and six, the first six chapters of the book. You'll take a test, that'll be about the midterm, and then you'll continue. You'll cover chapter seven. We skip a couple chapters, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then 18. Okay, now how many chapters is that? One, two, three, four, five, six more chapters. Well, let's say you do really, really well on that first test, the first six chapters. And then your strategy is that you do really, really well, your plan to do really, really well on the second test. Look at that third test. Is there a particular word that strikes you? How about this word comprehensive? Well, you know what that means. It goes all the way back to chapter one, and it covers those six chapters, and then it continues, and it covers the six chapters that we just finished. Comprehensive. So there's 12 chapters there. Well, the final exam is required. All students need to take the final exam and are required to do so, but if you did really, really well on exam one, and you're happy with that grade, 
and you did really, really well on exam two, and you're happy with that grade, what if you made a zero on the final exam? That would be your lowest grade, and it would be your drop grade. So my plan, if I was you, would be to do really well on test one and test two. Now, what if you forget to take test one? Please don't do that. I have students do that almost every semester. It is scheduled in pause. There's a calendar in pause. In the content area, I also provide you with a link to a class schedule so that you can plan, 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 okay? And, you know, I don't need the full weekend or several days, but I have a window of several days where any time during those several days that the exam is open to you, you only get one attempt at it, okay? It's not like the quizzes. This is where you demonstrate your knowledge. When it opens, you sit down, and in a single setting, you know, think of a class period, right? You sit down and you take the test. You don't have days and weeks and months to take the test. Once you sit, you begin it, and you finish it, and you're done. You do it all in one go. You don't come back to it later. There's none of that. I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, but you finish it, and you do really well plan for that. If you take it best on a particular morning, look at the schedule of when it's open to you and make plans on that morning. If you're a night person, make plans that night because when will it be a crisis? It'll be a crisis when you are, you know, a couple hours before the due date and you need to take it because then you will probably miss it. Something will go wrong. Your internet will drop. We'll have a thunderstorm that comes through. So plan not to be in that situation because if so, there are no makeups. There's no extension. It's gone. Don't get in that situation, okay? Because then what you'll have to do, it will not be the end of the world because then what you'll have to do is you'll just have to plan to take the comprehensive final. Okay, but your strategy going into it is to try to avoid those mistakes and do really well on exam one, do really well on exam two, and then you can still take the comprehensive final just to see how you do. Maybe you can even raise your grade even higher, but it takes the pressure off of you. Okay, so you have a lot of opportunities to succeed here, but it will take some planning and some commitment and some dedication on your part, but I know you can do that. What about extra credit? The students all say, right? Well, extra credit in this class is earned by performing service learning tasks. You can find out about these by clicking on the Dropbox link up here, and there'll be some instructions for you. And really what I have you do is get with the service learning office and find out what's available. They have a wide variety of things to choose from. Uh, I'm going to have you do a little write-up, a couple paragraphs on that to tell me about it. I will award up to 10 bonus points, five per project. Five for project one, five for project two, if you choose to do them. Common complaint, students will say, I don't have time to do anything. Well. I understand that. I do. I do. You're students. You're busy people. You work. You have families. But I want to draw your attention to this word that I'm flashing there. It says extra. Okay. So as you're planning, the key about extra credit is that it is extra. Okay. It is in addition to and therefore requires additional time. Um, now, you know, you, you are grown-ups and you have to make your decision about how you spend your time. But if you choose to do it and there, you know, at least explore it. Don't make up your mind that you can't do it before you've even made any inquiries to the service learning office to find out what's available. Okay. So I encourage you to investigate that. I actually think, I, I think that you really do have the time. Uh, you just think it's going to be weeks and months and years of your life. Uh, but you need to find out, especially as we enter this fall semester with Thanksgiving and Christmas, you would be amazed at the opportunities that are going to be available to you. Um, okay. So, you know, investigate that, look at that. Now, here's one note of caution. Sometimes students think that, um, uh, they think I'm going to extend due dates, and I do not. They um, they think that they can not do a whole bunch of work, and then at the end of the semester, do a little bit of extra credit to make everything up. Well, if I could teach the material that way, I would already have the course set up that way, and that's how we would do it. I mean, let's take the stress off of all of us, right? I mean, it would be less grading for me and less work on you, and, you know, we could just all work together. But that's not how we learn. You know that, right? Um, you know that you did not learn. If you have small kids in the house especially, they don't learn math because you show them the paper and say, see, got it? Okay, let's move on, right? Nobody learns that way. You, will learn, you learn by immersing yourself into the material, by repeating the quizzes, by posting to the discussion boards every week. 
every week and not one time a week. You learn by doing quizzes every day, repeating them, by thinking about the discussion posting answer before you post it. It's not a two-second text conversation. It's thought about. You immerse yourself in the reading and you have to make time to spend with your book in a quiet place without the television, without the earbuds, without all that stuff and think about what you read. I say without music but you, you know the earbuds you, you understand my point. Yeah, some, Sometimes you can with music. If you're singing along with the music you're probably not singing along with the textbook so just be aware. Okay so Right now, you may not be worried about how to calculate your grade, but you will be. Remember that this is here, so as we near the end of the semester, you can reference back to this um, and figure it out. Here, in general, as you go throughout the semester, here's what you want to do. Every time you complete an assignment, you want to say, how many points could I have earned? Ten points. How many points did I earn? Nine points. Okay. Keep running totals of those two values. How many points could I have earned? How many points did I earn? Take the points you earned, divide by the points possible, multiply by 100. That's your grade. Okay. In other words, points earned by points possible, divide, percentage, done. Okay. That will help you so that you're not in crisis mode at the end. You keep up with that grade as you go. How can you remember your grade? You can't remember all that because I post them in the grade book in pause. I don't, there it goes. Uh, see the grades link here? So at any time you click on that grades link, you're going to see what your current grades are. Now, the grade, you know, it, 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 89 is a B, so you know you see that. You're not thinking about this F, D, and C category because you put those out of your mind. Okay, you're striving for an A. The goal is an A. Tell you one of my pet peeve questions. Oftentimes, and if you're out there in cyberspace now, you're holding your hand up saying, do you round? Do you round my grades? Um, why are you asking me that? You're asking me that because you're planning for failure. Okay, You're saying, what's the most minimalistic thing I can do? As an educator, I don't like to hear that. I want you to be saying, how do I get 100? What can I do? What plan can I make? How can I strive to be my absolute best? And that's going to be by learning. Okay, Not by just getting by, but by learning. This is a great course. This information applies to your life right now. It's not pie in the sky. It's not something you'll never use. You, you can put this stuff to use today. So I want you to spend time with the textbook, spend time with the quizzes, spend time with the discussion board. Kind of a theme we have going here, don't we? You can do this. I don't want to scare you, and I want you to know I'm really for you, and I, I think I've given you a lot of opportunity for success, but I, I don't want you to think that it comes to you automatically. Um, but it's doable, folks. I know you can do this. Okay. All right. Read through here and uh, the major assignments, and uh, you know you'll see some more of my, uh, uh, you know how I look at the course and all. Uh, participation. Uh, you are expected to log into Pause daily. Make sure that you complete the attendance quiz so that I can mark you as here. Right. Uh, do some of those things. Um, let's see. Uh, you are expected to check pause emails. When you email me, there's some stuff about netiquette and that kind of thing here. Um, you know, just in general, you make a good impression when you use proper spelling, proper grammar. I tell you one other thing. Um, when you when you talk to me, I've asked you, please call me Dr. John and uh, not hey, not just start talking. I don't do that to you. If I did, I think you would say, wow, she's unprofessional. Wouldn't you kind of think that? But instead, when you when I address you and I call you by name or I say hello students or you know I'm giving you a formal greeting, it sets a different uh, level of professionalism, doesn't it? And so in this business class, in our business discussions, these are good practices, and I want you to use those. Those things don't happen after you get that professional job. Okay, they happen now, and they're practices that you form now. Okay, so you can read a little bit more about the discussion guidelines. Um, don't copy what your uh, classmate has just said. I mean, I'm reading these postings. I see that you've copied it. Okay, don't plagiarize. Use proper spelling. Use proper grammar. Tell me what your answer is, what your opinion is to the question. Support that opinion with references to the textbook. In other words, here's what it's all about. Demonstrate to me that you understand. 
It is my, not my job to assume that you understand. You may say, well, duh, I get it. I already know, but you have to convince me of that. That's where your grade is. That's not just me. That's true in all your classes. You don't go to your English teacher and say, I can write if I want to. Give me a grade. You don't go to your math professor and say, I can do calculus. Just write down an A for me, right? Nobody thinks that. I'm, be I'm teasing you, right? Nobody thinks that you know you have to demonstrate it. So when you do the discussion board postings, uh, you know, you want to convince me that you've read. And the way that you do that is by introducing facts from the textbook, right? All right, you can do that. Read through that. You, you've got that. There's some support numbers in here if you need it. Um, let's see, I, I believe I have a link to the schedule. If not, uh, sometimes from year to year as they... Uh, copy the course and that's a long story. Uh, I don't always, my particulars don't always come through so I see that I need to update that and I apologize. I assume that came through. Um, okay, so uh, you know, you'll have a link to the uh, schedule there and uh, you can do that. There's always the calendar link up here and all the uh, assignments are scheduled. You will also see, for example, I'm going to go back to quizzes very quickly. You see the due dates for each assignment here, basically a chapter a week. Okay, and you see the test already down there, and you can uh, take that. I'm going to click on discussions because I've not yet done that. And as you look through the discussions, you're going to have to scroll down. Make sure that you scroll down. Uh, that's easy to overlook. Um, I see, see six folks have already introduced themselves, and I look forward to doing that. Eight people have completed the attendance quiz, and I want that number to be higher. Okay, here's your first discussion question, and you can read that. Two people have already posted. That is so exciting. That is awesome. Okay, you can look ahead. You can't post yet, but you can see uh, the discussion questions that are coming. So, you know, you can start preparing your answer. I, I don't open it to you yet because uh, people end up accidentally posting to the wrong place. So this helps to guide you into the right uh, area. So I'm excited for the two people who have already posted and for the uh, into chapter one and for the five people who are six people, I'm sorry, who have already introduced themselves. That is awesome and I'm excited for you, okay? So we've got discussions, we've got quizzes. Um, at any time, uh, this is my student account, so I'm going to click on grades and you'll see it the way it looks to you. As you go through and look at the uh, grades, um, for chapter chapter one quiz out of ten points possible, you know, right now I have zero, so I need to get on it. Uh, for chapter two, and you see, this is how many points are possible and how many points I've earned. And I haven't done any of these assignments. I better get started, right? Okay. I know I need to get started. So with that, I'm going to go back to the course homepage. And you have my information here and a little welcome. You will also see over here on the side, upcoming events. In this upcoming events area, it will tell you what is due and what is opening. Okay, so you see that some of the dates here for Chapter 10, they're maybe a little far out, but this will also help you to plan your time. So I look forward to a really great semester. I really, I'm serious, I think you're going to like the content in this course. I really think you will. If you have questions, you want to email me. I knew I was forgetting something. Let me tell you how easy it is for you to email me. You're going to go to the class list, and you're going to look down this list. Now, you will see that I am marked as teacher there. Okay. Now, maybe you want to ask one of your uh, classmates. Uh, you organize a study session, something like that. Whoever you wish to email, put a check in the box next to their name. So if you're going to email me, put a check in the box next to my name. Either at the top or at the bottom, both, you will see a small envelope. You know, it looks like a letter. Click on that. This will open email. I'm going to give you one extra tip for success that a lot of students don't know. So this is the inside scoop, okay? Uh, you'll notice that it fills in my information. This is a closed email system, so don't try to email from or to a Southwest email. Make sure you check the box and use that as a way to begin an email to me, okay? Put a subject line on there. I've already got uh, some stuff in here, but put something in the body, and then you would send that. Of course, you know, you would do something nice, right? Here's the thing most students don't know. That's how you send an email. Click the send button, right? To check your email, you can either click this little envelope, but this is what I would do first. Go all the way out to my home. A lot of students don't know this. All the way out to my home. 
after you're at my home, you're not inside any of the courses, my home, then click email. Because when you click email at that point, you will see all the emails for all your classes. You will even see emails from the system where if you know like if you submit things for the Dropbox we're not using that in this particular course but the Dropbox sends you a receipt did you know that the only way you'll be able to see that receipt is if you start out with my by clicking on my home and then you click on email okay so all that said I hope I have not overwhelmed you welcome to the class um, we are finalizing uh, admission into the class uh, this week and so I want to reach out and just say hello to everybody and I uh, hope you hit the ground running don't get behind get started and uh, and work on these assignments and we will be talking to you more I will be talking to you more and I hope to hear from you uh, also throughout the semester through great uh, assignment postings and um, by seeing that you're processing what I'm telling you here okay alright thank you and we will be talking have a great semester